Hello and welcome back to another episode of New Mommy Relations, a podcast by New Mommy Life. And today's topic or subject matter is titled Phases of Mommyhood, as I have coined it. And I thought this would be a very special episode because I have noticed that over my span of being a mom, my daughter is now eight, and I have been witnessing my other friends, acquaintances, friends of friends, family members, etc. also become moms either around the time that I did or even recently. Um, like a, a quick story, it's funny because I've been having like pregnancy like on my mind like heavily like just I'm going to be just kind of giving you guys like the inside scoop a little bit here um, because I have been seeing so many other women pregnant and I don't know what it is it's just like baby season he is here I guess it's springtime so there's like so much love in the air and I feel like all the babies are popping out from the winter time I guess if you will um, and so I've just been noticing like the phases of mommyhood um, because I see moms um, either like in that newborn phase or like the school age where, where we are. Um, and then also like a few of like my really, really good friends like recently just announced their pregnancy or recently just announced like their birth because of, you know, obviously we've known that they were pregnant. And then a couple of my friends have even confided in me that they're even attempting to conceive. So I feel like it's just that season of like growth um, the seasons of life, the seasons of, of, you know, nature. And so this is just a really, uh, fun episode I want to dive into because I just noticed a few things that I think could be beneficial for moms, you know, in whatever stage that you are entering, as well as if you're already currently in it, or if you are in the very beginning phases and haven't even conceived yet, and you are kind of like already envisioning in your mind how, you know, you're hoping things will play out. And so I've noticed, so the first one I mentioned is like that newborn phase, which is what I call like that yummy phase where you're just so cuddly and warm. And if you are a breastfeeding mama, um, like I was, it's just that bond and that time of like, no one else in the world is around but you. And it is so sacred and it's so lovely. And it's just like, so it's just everything it's like you can't even believe this tiny little human that was kicking you on the inside like I used to um Kine's dad and I used to like uh put our hands on my tummy and Kine would like literally kick her little fingers like to the rhythm of the of the drum that he would play like on my tummy like it was the cutest thing and I just remembered like gosh she's like gonna be here in like a few weeks and I was just so like I was so nervous but I was just so excited but then it was just like that was a phase in and of itself and then now she's here and she's on the other side of, you know, of life. And it's just like, just the most lovely, just, oh my gosh, it's just like, I bet you're all smiling now listening to me as I'm saying this, because you can probably envision and imagine that phase if you are currently in it and or if you've been through it and you understand it. Um, it is just the best feeling and it's so... And it's, it's also like a very protective feeling as well, because you are just like, like white on rice, like high alert mama bear on a thousand. Um, but in a way, because you understand like this vulnerable little tiny, like, I don't know, this little, just this little ball of, of light. It's just so, they're just so here at the same time. They're so just needing you and leaning on you and loving on you in a way that's nonverbal, which we all know is really not, you know, the, the majority of communication, like I believe they say only 7% of communication is verbal. So it's that time in life. I feel where you get to experience that, at least for myself, it was just so lovely to just really be without words. There was no need for words, obviously, because, you know, our babies aren't speaking to us at that point in time verbally. However, they are speaking to us in the depths of ways that a lot of times I feel like as a new mom, you may have never experienced, um, especially if you didn't really have, you know, the greatest, you know, 
experience growing up or maybe you have strained relationships with your parents or you know maybe you didn't witness that or or you know have a lot of that growing up and I know that's a lot of mommy healing and mommy wounds around a lot of things too as well which is you know we'll dive into that a little bit more in other episodes because that's a big thing that I also had to go through and heal um so this was a part of that healing though because now it was like well just because I did not experience that does not mean that I can't change the trajectory of how I want things to be in my life moving forward and one beautiful meditation that I have found, um, I believe I was watching a video online and she was saying something to the effect of like, repeat over and over again in your mind, that was them and that this is me. That was them, this is me. And it was like a simple meditation. Um, I'll have to see if I could find it, but it was just so beautiful, so simple, which is so much, just so much was lifted off of my shoulders from doing that. So if you are in a space mom where you are feeling like maybe, you know, a lot of things are coming up in terms of what you were missing or things that you wish you had had and now you are you know changing the narrative breaking that generational curse and you are deciding to have a different outcome for you and your future with your children and your child and I think that simple meditation of just like that was them and this is me that was them this is me over and over and over again as many times as you need to as often as you need to anytime that you feel those thoughts creep up in your mind Um, say that to yourself and I think it's important especially during the newborn yummy phase because it's just you and your baby no one else is pretty much going to be around you at that time for the most part while you're breastfeeding or just spending time alone or perhaps your husband you know he's working outside the home and so maybe it is just you for a few hours you know during the day Um, and if you find those thoughts and feelings creep up I think that would be a really good time to further solidify that 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 was the end and this is the new and moving forward as you are bonding with your beautiful baby things are going to be on your terms for the better of the future Um, the next phase was the small child and I think that was a challenging phase in and of itself because the personality really begins to pop Um, kind especially her personality is just gosh from like not even being here maybe less than an hour I already had a couple of my midwives and even a couple of the other medical professionals that were in the room with us and we're just like gosh she has a little personality about her um so I feel like that age and that stage or that phase was the small child of the small child I'm trying to say um was the personality popping so I don't look at it as a tantrum I just think it was just her expressing herself and learning how to express herself Um, I have learned that children have low impulse control and so for me when I learn that I remind myself of that and then I also found a really beautiful quote I'll have to find it where it says something to the effect of when children are in the midst of chaos it's our job and responsibility as parents to share our calm and not join in on the chaos and I'm gonna have to remember who said that because I like to give credit where credit is due Um, But that helped me so much during that small child phase where people say terrible twos, terrible threes, terrible fours. I don't believe in that. I do think that we need to be a lot more mindful about the words that we speak. I know a lot of times we are inheriting language from previous, you know, generations. And again, no, no slight to our parents or grandparents. They did the best that they could with what they had, with what they knew. I just firmly believe that when we know better, we do better. And we have to, it's our responsibility and our duty. And so for me, I was never the one to say things like, you know, terrible. Oh my gosh, she's having this, she's having a meltdown. You know, like you start saying these words in these languages and it, it starts to manifest in that child because I feel like they're just going to take that energy on and embody it. Now, some people may say that's a little bit woo woo, but that's what we do around here. We do healing, we do wholeness and we do spirituality and we do speak to the higher consciousness of their soul and so I don't like to just reduce things down to just like oh they're just having a tantrum they're just being a brat they're just whatever you know all the like little dismissive things that people will say I think that we need to understand and honor the full breadth of the human experience and children if anything are in their their most raw form they haven't been watered down they haven't been conditioned or programmed if you will by society and by expectations outside of them. So they're going to be all the way real. So I always trust a child over 
really anything because they're the most closest to the natural state of where we all should be. Now, I'm not saying like being, um, not having emotional control or learning responsibility, you know, and, you know, how to properly conduct yourself and things of that sort. Obviously, that's why we're parents to be able to instill that into them, yet not stifling them. So I feel like the small child age is that that space where there's a lot of room for growth there if you're open and willing and as a conscious parent you are otherwise you wouldn't be here with me today listening to me um so yeah that's something that I have learned um that and that you know that those things are helpful so learning that you know children have low impulse control and in the midst of you know air quotes chaos it's my job to share my calm and so those are two things that I have found really beneficial and helpful that may also be beneficial and helpful for you if you are in that small child or just about to be in that small child phase. Hello, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. I wanted to stop in here real briefly and invite you all to join the Mama Tribe. If you want to do so, you can do so by visiting us online at newmommylifetv.com or you may click the link below the video or the podcast here. It'll take you straight away over to that. Um, there we have our bi-weekly Mama Tribe newsletter where we share access to important topics that go over homeschooling, our home educational resources, as well as for the new moms or the new mamas to be, how to create and experience an empowered and harmonious pregnancy, prenatal and or postpartum plan plus community building and ways to be more loving towards yourself while on your mommyhood journey. And so if you haven't joined yet, we encourage you and welcome you in. And we look forward to connecting with all you mamas out there. And now we're back into our regularly scheduled program. And the final phase I will, um, well, this, I feel this is ongoing, but this is where we currently are. So the third one I wanted to speak on was the school age and because we are homeschoolers, I was a planned homeschooling mom. And I know that's kind of a rarity because I know that's not really the norm nowadays. However, I know a lot of moms are really kind of taking their, taking like the reins back in a sense of understanding like the educational landscape and how certain outcomes just might not be best for you and your family. And so you might have to take, you know, different alternatives to education, whether it be co-opting or, like a, or a pod program um, a communal-based community, our homeschool community, like how we do it. We also, have a, we also have a pod program, and we also do um, extracurriculars as well as digital and online um, enrichment programs. So we have a mix, quite a bit of mix of things um, that I found that's worked for us. And if anyone's interested in getting a blueprint copy of what I have, you can purchase one on our website at newmommylifetv.com. And I have a couple... Um, ones that you can look at to see what benefits you because I feel like everyone needs something that works for them I've never been like it has to be just one way you have to really find what works for you otherwise you're just not going to be consistent with it so if you are interested to learn more about that um, and also there's a quiz you can take as well where it'll show you um, based off of your answers where you might be leaning towards and how which one might be a better fit for you so where we are in the school age, which is for our, you know, in our case, homeschool, um, it has been got a lot different because we are not doing the public school route. So for me, I love this, 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 this place. Now, most of her friends are mostly in private school or public school. They have like a, tr a traditional schooling. Um, we do obviously have friends in the homeschooling space as well. Most of them are digital or online for the most part because not everyone lives in the same city. Um, a couple of them are not too, too far away, but we have been able to do meetups and things like that sort. Um, but also I know it's really important for kind to have that personal touch. So obviously the most kids that live in our neighborhood are going to a traditional school, um, which is fine. I'm not knocking that at all. It's just not the path that we decided to take. Um, but I feel like it's important for her to have that mixture, to still have that in-person touch as well as the digital. I mean, it's important to have both. And there's obviously pluses and minuses to having both. Um, but the school age era or phase we're in is just beautiful because we literally have our days to really hyper focus on things that are beneficial in terms of her having desirable skill sets for her future. I look at this as it is my job as her parent to equip her for the latest and greatest so it's like we're in the 21st century now it's like I have to 
prepare her for the 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th century because my internal operating system had to be upgraded. Therefore, I have to continue to pour into her so she can become the better version of me. And I just don't take that lightly. So this part of me ensuring that she is going to be skilled, nurtured, um, fully seen and loved on as well as bringing out the best in her in addition to learning yeah, obviously the foundational frameworks of how you know certain things work like math and science and you know language um, but me taking it even a little bit deeper within that because I just firmly believe that even a lot of those things within the traditional education system really isn't being promoted as much as it should so we're learning actually three languages right now and I know that may seem like a lot how at the same time her brain is a sponge. So instead of her sitting around, you know, on a tablet all day, which, you know, we do have that time where she's learning certain like arithmetic things and I you know certain things about reading and language and how to spell certain things. Um, I decided to take the initiative and as well as for me and for my own benefit, we're going to learn Korean, Japanese, um, of course, Spanish. Spanish has always kind of been around because, you know, growing up in Southern California, it's just like it's kind of like a second language, like by default. However, I do want her to have more mastery over it. So we're doing Spanish, Japanese, and Korean. And it's funny because actually now that she's learning these languages, as we're learning English, of course, as well, because she has her English studies. And she's learning about, you know, how to properly spell and the context of words and definitions and et cetera. Um, she's will ask me things and I'm like I know kind this is weird this is how people say when people are not a native English speaker or if English is their second language how English can can be very difficult because some stuff just makes no sense and so as we're going through learning like how to say something in Japan or Japanese um she'll go back and say, well, how come it's this word in Japanese and it makes sense, but when I'm looking at this in English, it's telling me it should be this way, but it's really this way. So I feel like those type of things I'm able to really add more context to and expand her mind and just have her view the world from even a global standpoint now as opposed to just thinking like, oh, we just live in a very siloed, secluded, individualistic type of type of world when that's just not the case at all. I feel like homeschooling has provided the ability for us to really expand our community more so than anything and open our eyes to the world and not just look as like, well, we live here on this street in this city and this is our zip code and this is who we are. It's like, no, there's a big world out there. There's so many people to know and, and meet and to learn from. And I feel like the school age is just that part where we're at right now where her level of creative and innovation and just curiosity it's just like prime for the picking. And so I'm just ensuring that I'm filling her mind with everything she needs to succeed and to thrive. And um, yeah, that's just kind of where we're at right now. And so I wanted to share these three phases because I feel like they're all very important, um, especially in the very early part of it, part of the growth phase, I should say, the development child rearing uh, phases of life and she's about to come down for breakfast right now so I'm glad I was able to get this podcast recorded quickly um, so yeah I just wanted to be able to share these three um, important phases and share some tips and things that I feel um, other moms could benefit from and I wanted to share a little bit about what we're doing over here in our world and yeah let me know what you think how do you um, envision the phases of mommyhood how are you handling them how are things um, How are things going and how have you been able to find and discover ways that have worked for you? So share with me. Let me know. I really want to hear back from you. Um, you can do so either underneath the video here if you're watching it or you can leave a comment on the podcast and I would love to learn more about what you got going on in your world, mama. Also, I would like to invite you to listen to our next podcast episode titled How to Deal with Unsolicited Advice. Ugh, haven't we all been there? as it pertains to your mommyhood journey and you raising your children. And so I think that was a really good episode that I want to get off of my heart because I have dealt with that and I think a lot of moms deal with that as well. And so that's a good episode to listen to if you are in the listening mood. So go ahead and click over to the episode over there. Um, so thank you so much again for for listening and I will see you and talk to you, connect with you all very, very soon. Thank you all again so very much 
for today's episode. If you would love to learn more about all the things we have going on, talking about anything as it pertains to womanhood, crafting out an empowered and harmonious prenatal and postpartum or pregnancy plan as you are pouring into creating and raising a more conscious community as you pour into more self-aware and conscious children that you are raising personally, as well as how we can all band together and create more community that is sharing that same sacred sacredness and the space of that. Um, we encourage you to visit us online on the website. It's new mommy life tv.com. Again, that's new mommy life TV. Dot com. We have a couple resources there for you and we can't wait to connect with you all in the very near future. Have a great one.